Welcome to Uncommon Knowledge. I'm Peter Robinson. Be sure to join us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash unc dot unc knowledge. Let me do that again. Facebook.com slash unc knowledge. Uh, you'll be able to submit questions, comments, suggest future guests. A former science and technology editor for The Economist magazine, Matt Ridley is a journalist and a best-selling author whose many books include Genome, the Autobiography of a Species in 23 Chapters. Matt Ridley's most recent book, published just this year, The Rational Optimist, How Prosperity Evolves. Matt Ridley, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me on the show, Peter. Segment one, Ideas Having Sex. I'm going to quote as over and over again through this program from The Rational Optimist. Look at the hand axe and the computer mouse. One was made by a single person, the other by hundreds of people, maybe even millions. Close quote. Explain what, what you mean when you say the computer mouse was made by millions of people and what that has to do with your argument. Well, unlike a stone tool made by uh, an ancestral hominid, uh, a, a computer mouse, which is exactly the same shape, size and shape, is a confection of different substances. There's plastic and silicon and metal in there, but it's a confection of different ideas, too. Ideas, the idea of computing, the idea of plastic, the idea of all these things have come together, and it, it embodies those ideas. Now, how do ideas get to come together and join to meet and to mate in that way? Well, it turns out that there needs to be a process for that to happen. In biology, my body's also a confection of ideas, the idea of genes, the idea of brains, etc. You know, all, they're all inventions that have occurred to, my, to an ancestral species. How did evolution make me a cumulative confection of ideas? Uh, it used sex. Sex is what enables you to draw upon the inventiveness of the whole species because it enables ideas to, to cross from one lineage to another. So there's a process in human history that has the same impact and that we had culture, we had imagination, we had big brains. They didn't really change our status as just another ape with a bit of technology until suddenly we had exchange. And the, the habit of swapping one thing for another had the same impact on our cultural development, suddenly it began to explode as the invention of sex had in biology. So that's why I say ideas having sex is the secret behind human progress. Mm. Uh, once again, the rational optimist, human progress has been a good thing and the world is as good a place to live as it has ever been for the average human being, richer, healthier, and kinder too. So this is where the optimism comes in. That's now you, right. uh, you, the book has been out for six or seven months now. Have you had any occasion to retreat from that assertion? Well, um, uh, soon after the book came out, uh, it contains the claim that um, uh, the amount of oil spilled in the ocean is down 90% since the 1970s. Well, there was a big oil spill almost immediately after the book came out. But, you know, the trend is still there. On average, we're spilling less oil in the ocean. Um, the, the numbers really astound me. And, and no, I haven't had to retreat from any of them because I keep getting more examples. I heard just last week, for example, that uh, Stephen Pinker was telling me that the, the 2000s uh, looks like it's the decade with the lowest number of war deaths for 150 years at least. Um, now, we find that surprising in the West because we've been involved in some wars yes. in the 2000s and we weren't yes. before that. But globally, the number of people killed in wars is down. And uh, per capita income is trebled in my lifetime. Child mortality is down by two thirds in my lifetime. Um, uh, lifespan is up by one third. We're adding lifespan globally. This is talking about the whole world, not just, you know, in the West. Uh, uh, we're adding lifespan at the rate of five hours a day. It's an, it's an extraordinary achievement. Of course, there are things going in the wrong direction. I suppose if I, it would not be correct to interpret that as meaning that I could sleep five hours more each day. That's the first, sorry <laughs> about that. But, so Matt, what I want to know is when you sit down to write The Rational Optimist, which is this, for a book that's as thick as it is, it is wonderfully readable. I'd like to assert that for readers right now. Thank you. Who is in your mind as someone whom you must rebut? What are you pushing against? When I was a student in the 1970s, I was told that the future of the world was bleak. The grown-ups told me that. They told me the population explosion was unstoppable, there was a cancer epidemic caused by chemicals in the environment that was going to kill us off, the, uh, the desert was advancing, uh, the oil was going to run out. I don't remember anyone telling me 
actually, you know, we could be on the, on the verge of three decades of faster economic growth, more reduction in poverty, more reduction in health, ill health and hunger, more democratization than at any period in history. And yet that's what actually happened. So I'm writing this kind of to a version of myself 30 years mm. ago saying, here's the book I wish I'd been able to read now, uh, when in the 1970s. You talk about being educated in the 70s. You're talking about university in Britain. All right. So let me just introduce for you, you and I are roughly the same age, the American experience where we have President Jimmy Carter talking about limits to growth, the Club of Rome uh, talking again about the whole notion of small is beautiful, economies must get smaller. Paul Ehrlich, a professor right here at Stanford to this very day, predicting famine, mass die-offs in the population. This is what you were, you were talking about exactly. in the 70s as well. Exactly. It's, it's, it's in the air throughout it's, the Western world. It's, it's, I mean, we're hearing all those examples. And Paul Ehrlich, for example, is, is specifically predicting that lifespan in, in, in uh, the West is going to drop to 42 years by the end of the 20th century, instead of which it continued to, to rise. In the, you know, there was no great cancer epidemic.